Okay, hello everyone, this is Full Metal Swordsman, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC. Um, you may notice during the video I'm using some dated hardware. It's not going to be an issue here because even with modern tech, it's still the same. So, let's get into what the parts are. So, over here. so for the CPU, we have the AMD Phenon 2 X2 555 Block Condition Callisto. Whatever the hell all that means. <laughs> um, cooling it, we have the Alpine 64 Plus. Repairing that with one 8GB stick of Corsair XMS3 DDR3 memory. For our boot drive and storage, we have two 500GB Western Digital Caviar Greens. That is all going into the ASUS M5A97 LER 2.0 motherboard paired with the Gigabyte GT420 128 uh, bit video card. Now, mind you, this is all budget hardware, and so the total cost of, make, of all of this was $300. So, for a computer, that's pretty cheap. That's like something you'd get at Walmart, but this is better. So, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in building a PC is prep the motherboard. We're going to start by installing the CPU in the socket. So first, we lift the socket retention arm. Very simple, almost no force needed. Next, we're going to take the CPU... Oh, don't do that! <laughs> we're going to take the CPU, open the case, Grab by the sides. Do not touch the heat spreader or the pins on the bottom. Those are very sensitive and your, the oil from your fingers will mess it up. So, what you do is you line up the little triangle on the CPU with the white triangle on the motherboard. And it's the same on Intel motherboards too. So don't, if you're working with Intel, don't worry. It's exactly the same. Even the retention arm stuff. The only difference is Intel has a little metal piece that comes up with the retention. But now that it's inserted, gently, do not push on it. You're going to lower the retention arm. This may require a bit more force, but that's because it's locking it in place. Okay, so next we're going to install our RAM. And what you do is you refer to your motherboard manual to determine which DIMM slot your RAM goes in. If you're using single channel like I am, you're only going to use one slot. If you're using dual channel or quad channel or tri channel, you're going to use how many, however many slots you have that you can use. Always refer to your motherboard manual because they are different on different motherboards. For mine, it's going to be this first blue slot for single channel memory. And we are going to lower that in. And then you're going to push down, even force on both sides, until these side clips are full straight up and down. That means it is locked in place, okay? Next, we are going to apply thermal paste Normally this comes in a tube. I got it in this little container because it was a bit more and it was cheaper this way. Um, I need to get an applying tool, so give me just one second. <laughs> there it is. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to take a little bit of thermal paste. You want some that is about the size of a, well in this case a cooked grain of rice because it's impossible to get a good amount. And you want to apply that to your CPU. That'll give you your best coverage without making sure any, uh, while making sure that none of your other components like outside here are connected. So now we close that up. And now we install our cooler. Now for this one, I happen to know that it goes on this way. So what you do is you take this clip, put it over the retention piece here. So you can see how that's 
over the plastic piece attached to the motherboard. Try and get this to go on as straight as possible. It's gonna push down, it's gonna smear out that thermal paste that we applied. You wanna make sure that this other side also goes over that little retention bracket. See how it's not right now? And now it is. And then we're going to take one of our screwdrivers and when building a PC, you only need any Phillips head screwdriver will do. I like using the bit sets because they give me more options. I'm gonna go with this one. There we are. Now normally on an AMD socket, you will have a little lever on one side that'll seal it in place. This one, you have to screw it in place. And you want to get this nice and tight, but not too tight. You do not want to over tighten it. We got to get it on both sides. If I can get the screwdriver in. You want to make sure there is even pressure on both sides, which is why when you're doing a CPU cooler that goes across and has four screws or something like that, you want to do it in a cross pattern. This one only has one that you tighten both sides only so far. And that way you make sure that the thermal paste we applied earlier is evenly spread across the CPU heat spreader to get proper conductivity. Now what you do, I have put it on here this way so that we can wrap it around, get that cable nice and tucked away and neatly, and you're gonna plug it into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. And my cameraman's gonna come around here so I can properly show you what I'm talking about. Now on mine, it is this middle one right here. This middle header for is for the CPU heat sink fan. So we're gonna plug it in right there. If, you do, if it is not clearly labeled which one is the CPU fan header, consult your, consult your uh, manual, your motherboard's manual. All right, now our motherboard is prepped and it is ready to go into our case. Okay, so now the next step is preparing the case so that you can put the motherboard in it. Now in this case, it's as simple as moving all these ugly wires out of the way. Now, I don't think I mentioned the case we were using in the first section, so this case is the Logisys 308 Red, and it's red because the front's red. I know you can't very well see that with the lighting we have, but it is. Now that those are other, other, out of the way, I can speak, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that all of your motherboard standoffs are installed in the correct positions. Now this case comes with the standoffs pre-installed but it only comes with six, meaning you need to use a skinnier motherboard than most are. So for my motherboard, the standoff positions you can see are these little golden things in here. And your motherboard has to sit on those so that it is not touching the case. If it touches the case, it will bridge contacts that should not be bridged and it will fry your motherboard. What you wanna do now is first make sure that you have your IO shield installed this little piece of metal here that goes on the back of the PC and it basically just covers up this. It basically just covers this to make it look pretty. Because <laughs> if you don't have that then you're going to see this and then you're going to see inside and it just doesn't look good. Also it does help with dust. So now what you're going to do is you're going to grab the CPU cooler which you have now securely attached to the motherboard and lower the entire assembly into the case, lining up the screw holes with the motherboard standoffs that I spoke about earlier. And there we are. And now, you're going to take your motherboard screws, one by one, and screw in on all six points on your motherboard. So, I will get right back to you as soon as I have that done. Okay, so now that our motherboard is installed, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the front I.O., which is done on these little pins right here. 
this is the only input on a motherboard or output, input, whatever, that is not key. Everything else will only go in one place at one time. These, however, are just pins that stand up. Now on mine, it is clearly labeled under the front I.O. pins what goes where. However, if your motherboard is not clearly labeled, again, refer to your manual. Okay, so when plugging in your front I.O., it might be confusing what's positive and what's negative on the header. Well, to simply solve that area, you turn it around and there is a little tiny triangle. That is positive. I'm just gonna hold on, it's gonna focus. Yeah, positive. Is it focused? No. Okay, so a little tr triangle on the uh, cord here. Sorry, the other ones are getting in the way. Here, you put your hand on it. The little triangle is always positive. It's not, okay? It's not focusing, but okay. Well, they'll know what I'm talking about, but... So when you're plugging those in, it'll say positive this way, negative this way. If you can't tell, the triangle, the one with the triangle, is positive. Okay, so next we're going to be installing our hard drives in the hard drive cage right here. Now this is only on this case. Most other cases, especially the modern high-end cases, will have a shroud down here. The motherboard will be up here and the power supply will be under that shroud. And the hard drive cage will be up the front under the shroud as well. This is not a good case. So the hard drive cage is right here. And it, it sucks. So, for our first hard drive, we are going to install our boot drive. Now, because these are identical hard drives, I labeled this one boot in pencil because I have a terrible memory. This one is going to go in our second hard drive slot. And now, we take a couple screws. Oh, be warned, this case also does not give you enough screws to properly secure the hard drives. Depending on how many peripherals you have, such as video cards, uh, network adapters, and other things, it does not give you enough screws. I luckily am able to do two screws per hard drive. So luckily that is enough to keep it from bouncing all over the place and destroying itself. Now, the first one's screwed in. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to connect this to the motherboard so that I know it is the boot drive. Me, personally, I always connect the boot drive to the port labeled SATA1, which is usually on the very bottom of the motherboard, or it'll be the first one labeled on the side. So we plug our SATA cable, which is keyed, by the way, into the hard drive. And then we plug it into the port labeled SATA 1 on the motherboard. Always plug your boot drive into the first one. Now we're going to take our second hard drive, usually our storage drive. Again, mine are identical because I'm poor. I can only afford to get two of the same hard drive. That one is going to go in our top drive, cage, drive slot. Again, take couple screws and we are going to screw it in. Normally when building a PC it helps to have a magnetic screwdriver because that way you can just set the screws on the head and you know you're good to go. I do not have a mag mag magnetic <laughs> screwdriver. So this is what I have to deal with. Also, if you're not using a magnetic screw, screwdriver, beware of any loose screws. If any screws fall in here and fall behind the motherboard, that is bad. Retrieve them immediately. They can bridge contacts that is a cat. 
Lost screws can bridge contacts that should not be and also fry your motherboard. That's why they're on the standoff, so they don't come in contact with metal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug our second hard drive in using our SATA cable. Again, it is keyed, so it only goes in one way in one spot. And we are going to plug this one into SATA 2, just because I like going in order. You can really use any SATA port you want, but I like going in order because I'm a stickler. Okay, how do we install a fidget spinner? That does not go in a PC. Why is it there? It teleported. <laughs> okay, so the final part, well, second to last, the final will be running our power cables. So the second to last part, we are going to install our PCI uh, add-in cards, so our graphics card and our wireless network card. Now this I did not mention in the first part of the video because it was not part of the original budget, it was not part of the original bill. My mother bought this for me after I bitched about having, not having Wi-Fi in my room, or any internet at all. I would have preferred a power line adapter, but beggars can't be choosers. So, we're going to install our video card. This is what the uh, GT420 Gigabyte Edition looks like. It's a very budget card, and you'll notice that all these parts are pretty budget because I don't have money. What we're going to do, same as installing your RAM or memory, is you're going to open this little tab right here, and you're simply going to lower the video card into the PC, make sure it lines up with the port properly. Where are you? There you go. And then you're going to push down until it is fully seated. Always make sure it is fully seated. No worries. There's no way to actually see it unless you have a very... That's you're going to have to tell in person by looking up here at the top at the back. And just look, see if there are any contacts showing through the port and the video card. Now we're going to secure it in place with one of our screws. And that goes there. You need to hold the video card in place while you install the screw, otherwise it'll sag. And sagging video cards is bad. So, you simply screw that in, get it decently tight but not over tightened, and you've just installed your video card. Next is our Wi Fi adapter. Now, if you're using Ethernet, you don't need one of these. I do not use Ethernet because I am in the farthest room from the uh, router modem thing that you get from Xfinity Comcast. That we are going to install in our second PCI X1 or PCIe Gen 1 slot because you see the first one is covered by the fan on the graphics card. So now we simply slide that in. Make sure you've taken off the antennas, otherwise they'll get in the way. But we're going to slide that in here, and that is going to sit in just like the graphics card, except for there's no tab. The tab is only on your PCI X16 slots. So now we simply screw this in as well. This is difficult without a magnetic screwdriver. <laughs> so that needs to sit in there like that. And we simply tighten it up. And get that good and tight too, but not too tight. And that is everything installed. The fuck did the antennas go? They're over here. I took them off. The fuck? Yeah. yeah. You take them off to install them and you screw them back on. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Like that. You're cutting the video! Okay, now the final step is going to be to run all of your power s supply cords. We're going to start with the 24 pin motherboard power. And that simply goes on the further forwardmost port. Everything is keyed, so it can only go in one way. No. This one's a little fidgety because it likes to, it's a little firm. Okay, what's next? What's next? Where is it? Here it is. Next, we're going to run, not that one, this one. We're going to run this one, that is our CPU power uh, line, and we're going to route that around the bottom here to make cable management in this case a little easier, and then we simply plug that in to the four pin connector you see here. And there you go. Uh, something fell. Let's see, what else? What else? Ah, uh, yes. We need to run power to our hard drive so that they can spin and read data. Did you say spin? Spin. Yes, just like that. <laughs> so what we do is we take these SATA connectors that are essentially longer versions of our SATA cables, SATA data, and these are power. Also keyed, only going one way, and you plug it into the hard drive. And we need two of them because we have two hard drives. So we plug that in. Okay. Next, the last thing to plug in is our fan, which is here at the back of the case. It comes pre-installed. Okay, so... Uh, the fan is a Molex connector, and this one has two because, you know, extra power if you have extra fans or whatever, but we don't. We have one fan. So what we're going to do is we need to find a Molex connector on here. We have one right here, and we simply need to plug it into the connector here. And that's done. Now we're going to try and route that around here like this. Cable management is actually very important, especially if you're working in a small form factor case. Um, unfortunately, this case has terrible cable management. There isn't even any way to feed the cables behind the motherboard tray or whatever. I wish there were, but there is not. Anyway, I do believe we are done, aside from whatever cable management I'm going to do in here. That is how you build a PC. So we're just done? Pretty much, yep. Alright, hold the camera. I want to make this work. Nope. Please stop. It didn't work. Hold on. I got this. Alright, now it's finished. <laughs> Alright, I'm done with you. Go away. This is our PC now. <laughs>